Hello and welcome to yet another episode of I Africa, the show that celebrates everything to do with artistry, creativity, vibrance, colour and most importantly a show that celebrates black excellence. I am your host Nicole Jago and on this episode we talk to four phenomenal individuals who are pushing the African narrative not just in Zimbabwe but in the world. On this episode we speak to Zimbabwean born producer and music maker. His name is Tinashe Sibanda, known as Bantu, a two-time Grammy nominated producer and music maker now as he tells us his journey in Zimbabwe in the second segment, we speak to Ryan Dewey, an artist who is embracing AI and producing digital artwork. We also speak to another phenomenal artist, and her name is Shana Sujonga, who is adding her voice to ending drug and substance abuse and abuse against women. That is our episode of I Africa. I hope you are inspired and you're motivated to go on your own creative artistry journey. Please stay with us. I Africa searches for inspiration and innovation in all areas of popular culture, from fashion and design through to architecture, art, food, and travel. On this first segment of I Africa, we speak to Zimbabwean born Tinashe Sivanda, who is a music producer and now has gotten to make music himself, having been based in Hollywood for quite a while and also have two Grammy nominations in his name. My name is Bantu, I'm a music producer, songwriter and artist and I've been making music uh, since I was a little kid and I love you know, making music, entertaining people and just giving people an escape. I make all kinds of music, I make, I'm a piano, I make um, Afro beats, I make Afro pop, pop, hip hop, you know, anything, whatever you know, I feel like that day. I don't know, I must have been like 13 years old when I started making music. I think I, my parents were very strict, so I wasn't allowed to watch TV. So I just would, as soon as I got in, you know, finished my homework, it was just music. That was the only thing I had that was, you know, I could do for entertainment. And I just fell in love with the process, the idea that when you sit down, you start with nothing. And by the time you get up, you have this whole song, you can show your friends, you can dance to it. It's like the fruit of your labor is instant, you know? So I think music's super special in that way. It's a shareable gift. I think music is what fills time and space, you know? Like, it's a lot of times we remember a time from the music, you know, we'd be like, oh my goodness, that song reminds me of that moment. So I think music just timestamps, it's like a soundtrack to our lives and it also timestamps certain moments. Uh, yeah, it's a very special thing. I, I think when I, produced Body On Me for Rita Ora and Chris Brown. That was a, a breakthrough moment because until then, I was, you know, just working with artists who were here and there. And then those were the first two artists I worked with that as soon as that song came out, it went straight to radio, it went straight to top 20, and I was hearing it everywhere. And I was like, wow, this went from my laptop in my bedroom all the way to like the whole world. So that was amazing. I've worked with a lot of artists. Uh, I've worked with J Balvin, Camila Cabello, Maroon 5, Lotto, Young Blue, Jason Derulo. Uh, I've worked with ASAP Rocky. I've worked with K Michelle. I've worked with Fireboy. I've worked with uh, Pabi Cooper. I've worked with Calvin Momo. Yeah, the list goes on. Um, I think it's fun. I think anytime you get to work with other musicians who are super talented, there's just the potential that two worlds can come together and you guys make something exciting. So I love, I love working with people, especially when they're from different countries, different cultures. I think, you know, taking like my Zimbabwean style and, and, and collabing with wherever they're from and making something. No, I've never felt disadvantaged. If anything, I've always felt the opposite. I've always felt like it was an advantage to grow up, you know, in Zimbabwe and hear like, African drums and rhythms and you know because anytime we're making music I always hear six different rhythms than you know other people are and so for me it's like my superpower in a way uh, to be able to 
you know, I also didn't grow up with anything putting me in a box of certain genre. I can do any style. So, no, I, I've always looked at it as something that was uh, my secret weapon. I think music is, is, is at the forefront of it. I think music goes before politics and before um, food and, and, and everything because music is, it's so sneaky, you know what I mean? It's like you can get someone who might not agree with your beliefs or values, but you played them a song and they start moving and already it means that they're receptive to your message. So I think music is, is a beautiful thing that unites people, unites countries. Even now, there's a big thing of like, we all listen to music and we don't know what the language is. It could be in Spanish, it could be in Zulu, it could be in whatever language. We just describe it and say, you know, I like the vibe, I like the energy. I think, I think a Grammy nomination is something that comes and it, 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 you're like, wow, I can't believe this. You know, this is something I grew up seeing. So it means a lot to be nominated, but at the same time, it also feels like uh, just a milestone, but a reminder of like, okay, we got this done, but we still have so much to do. So no, I don't think it didn't really change or define me. I think it was one of those things where I think if you do, if you work hard enough, I think the accolades and the recognition and Honestly, whatever you're trying to do, it will come. It'll just, it's just a fruit. To me, it's just like a result of, you know, it's a delayed result, actually, of like maybe you put in five, ten years and then something, uh, someone comes and says, oh, congrats. But honestly, it's like you've been kind of working hard the whole time. So as an artist, I just, I want to take this thing as far as possible. You know, I want to put Zimbabwe not only on the map in Africa, but globally, you know, I want it to be that when people talk about music, they have to mention Zimbabwe, you know, when they mention the, the greats, they have to mention Zimbabwean artists, and not just me, but I want it to be like a plethora of artists who come, um, who also come out and, you know, I, I want to spread the message that anything is possible. You know, I think sometimes when you grow up in a place where there's a lot of challenges it's easy to feel like there's a limitation of like oh man i would have done better if i had grown up here or there or if i had had the resources but and although all of that you know definitely plays a part i am obsessed with the idea that you know of, of writing your vision down of visualizing of affirming of of just seeing you know like how far can you take it and and maybe if you set the example, then the next person can come and take it even further. In Zima, there's so many guys I haven't worked with, so I, I gotta make sure like I do that. I know I've been talking to Natio, I've been talking to, um, I've been talking to so many guys, K Flo. I've been talking to, you know, a lot of the guys who are killing it right now. And there's also, uh, you know, in, in in South Africa, there's a lot of the piano guys that I've worked with some, but there's still a list of guys I haven't worked with. And uh, yeah, yeah, I've got I've got a, a couple of I got a couple of projects I'm working on. Um, I have a joint project with Dr. Chai that's coming out soon. We're working on that. I've got like a piano fusion Afrotech project I'm working on. And yeah, just more collabs, some DJ stuff. I'm also trying to do some. I like to keep people their toes. So right when you think you have you figured out, we just switch it up. Yeah. I never realized how much of a a good sense of humor Zimbabweans have. I think everywhere I go, I just realized that like everyone, everyone is, uh, everyone is so quick and, and is always either making fun of you or cracking jokes. And I think that speaks to how much charisma we have as a country and as a nation. It doesn't matter where you are. And so I would just, I think we're just good people. And I think, uh, you know, for all the other nations and countries and, and spaces, Zimbabwe is coming. We're on our way. We're a little, we might be a little late, but we're coming. To anyone who's watching this, you only live once. Go after your dreams. Don't compromise. Don't negotiate. Write it down and spend the next five years with your head down and go for it. Do the impossible. Life is not realistic, so don't even start by being realistic. Just go for the craziest thing ever and see what happens. That was the story of Timothy Swanda, known as Bantu. He surely is an artist who is taking his artistry outside of the African continent to the rest of the world. I Africa searches for inspiration and innovation in all areas of popular culture, from fashion and design through to architecture, art, food and travel. 
The focus is on outstanding individuals doing extraordinary things on the African continent. Hi Africa searches for inspiration and innovation in all areas of popular culture, from fashion and design through to architecture, art, food and travel. The focus is on outstanding individuals doing extraordinary things on the African continent. Welcome back to iAfrica and we get to speak to Ryan Dube, an artist who is not just doing artistry as we know it in Zimbabwe, but is also embracing a little bit of technology in it. Okay, uh, my name is Ryan Dube. Uh, I'm 20, 23 years old. So I started doing art uh, when I was in grade 5. Um, so the art I'm specializing on is called uh, digital painting. I do painting using, the, using a computer. And the graphics tablet. Okay, um, so as kids, uh, we like drawing cartoons as kids, but then as we mature, uh, the, uh, and let's say it, uh, when I when I enrolled at the gallery, I started to shift, I started to mature, I started to grow in terms of art, because I was now learning art. What is art from from day one till now? So so, yeah. so I've been shifting from being. A, so a childhood artist to a, to a mature artist. Here at Gallery, I learned to become an artist here at the Gallery. Because I, I am a student at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe. I can't say much. The experience is okay. And I'm, involved, I'm evolving, I can say. I'm now a better artist. I've been doing this uh, since 2020. We're still facing challenges, uh, especially the AI challenge. I do digital paintings, and now they are the AIs where you can just go on the internet, uh, type whatever you want to type, then the AI can generate, can, can, can generate uh, an artwork for you. So it's a disadvantage for us that need a digital painting. But it's like digital art as well. I'm putting value into my work. The way I do my artworks and the way artificial intelligence do the artworks is way more different. What makes mine different is because um, I can easily uh, give you my, like, let's say my, I call it a PSD, a PSD file. So a PSD file consists of layers, the layers that I use to draw, since from the, um, the first layer, the second layer, up to the final artwork, with more details, I guess. Of which the AI can just produce a picture for you. Yeah. I think, I think artificial intelligence is the future for those, those who have developed already. Here in Zimbabwe, uh, we are still developing. But we are going there. Technology is really We will go there, but I am sure when, when we get there, we will have something to say about that. As, as, to, as, the, as Zimbabweans, we need like to come up with the awarenesses, like to introduce like my, my learning facilities and, produce, and, and like give children um, my computers, uh, the likes of graphic graphic tablets, the drawing tablets, so that they can venture into digital more rather than using my pen or in pencils just to draw an artwork, but to get into digital, to get into digital world as well. Okay, the, my biggest moment was when I first exhibited at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, my first my first digital painting. I was happy. Was, I, 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 feel, I feel like it was my greatest achievement. Was, I thought we the only big big artist exhibit in the in, in gallery. But I found I find myself the way my artwork was chosen to be one of the artworks to be exhibited. Okay, I think the police makers the police makers should like um let's say they should govern like, the laws. They should give they give out the laws which can guide and protect artists' rights. Uh, I can say we have to have value in art. We have to give art value. We have to ask first maybe the meaning of the art, why I created my art. So that you can like you can know what whatever you are buying. You can have an idea of something you are buying. 
I uh, just want to say keep on painting, uh, keep on doing art. Art is good. Art can help people in different ways. Art is therapy. So my artworks, uh, it is a series called the Humanoid. Humanoid is a transition from, uh, from normal human being to human and robotics. My artworks, uh, it's, it's called a humanoid. A humanoid, it's a human, human being and a robotic. Human beings and robots venture together, like mixed together. So that it's humans and robots together, all together, a human and a robot. Okay, since, since we are want to, like, to move from the, our own way of tradition into, to get into the technological advancement, we are moving through the technological line. So that's why you're doing robotics? So that's why I'm doing robotics. And robotics, they, they, they didn't even start uh, today. They started way back long in the BCs. That's when they started. So this picture, it's, it's, it's a human being with robotic features. So this is a human in robotic in a robotic way. Uh, let's say a person ROR and then they want like to let's say a person either head damage. So they, they are changing the like some the, the damaged parts and replace them with um, my electronic features. That was the story of Tanasha Dube as he moves with the times as technology continues to dominate not just the arts industry but the world as a whole. In the third and final segment we talk to a female artist who is using her voice to tell the story of women who have been abused and also fighting the scourge of drug and substance abuse. I Africa searches for inspiration and innovation in all areas of popular culture from fashion and design through to architecture, art, food and travel. The focus is on outstanding individuals doing extraordinary things on the African continent. I Africa searches for inspiration and innovation in all areas of popular culture from fashion and design through to architecture, art, food and travel. The focus is on outstanding individuals doing extraordinary things on the African continent. Okay, my name is Ishania Sujonga, I'm 21 years old. I do photography and painting, but my painting and my photography is all about my story and other people's lives. The stories which they've been through, not them, what people see them in the world. Okay, my work in an actual, I will tell you, my work comes from an African. I'm trying to put Western and African mixing them together so that we can bring our African culture in a Western way, than for us to always go in the Western way, not going with our culture, because people are now living our culture going by the western but I mix both. Said I'm having makeup and I'm having another cultural stuff in my face, my clothes, my background. I'm trying to show people that we can do both. We cannot just do one thing. Because most of the people are now moving to Western living their culture. But there more money in our cultural in our cultural works than in the Western works because everyone is doing Western works more than the cultural works. That makes it more expensive for a cultural work than a Western work. Okay, I started in primary, in grade three, I was only doing drawings at Bezero School, there was an art class, painting, I was not into photography. And then when I went to high school, they started teaching me about photography, but they were not teaching me how to apply the softwares. They would just teach you how to take pictures. We go for camps, art camps. We would meet different schools, do different stuff, learn about art. And then when I finished high school, I had to come to the National Gallery of 2020. And then I started learning more about art, about how it goes, the rules, the everything of art. You mentioned being autistic from a young age. Would you say your parents were always supportive of the 
possibility of you taking art as a career? My parents were always supportive. They would make sure that they would ask around for guidance, what you're supposed to do. They would ask my teachers, and my teachers would tell them, we'll take her to the National Gallery. Okay, when I saw my art was appreciated, um, I was in a gallery exhibition, which was done here at the National Gallery. My photographs were picking up, and then I was happy because that was something from coming from just Oh, this kid's doing that. Who's oh, that kid's? No, I was not so old. Some people would tell me yes, stuff like that. So I was very happy. And that shows the power of women. Because if there was no women in photography, there would be only suggested that boys can do better than girls. So we're trying to show them that no, as girls, we can do what they can do. We have more power than boys. That's what we're trying to do. That's why we are coming out to dominate. For my adverts, this one, I'm talking about the abuse of girls being made to do drugs, being beaten because they are forced into early marriages, they are forced into things which they are not supposed to do because there is peer pressure in school, there is different stuff in school, there is violence. You can actually, the emotions, the because there are almost 21 types of violences which people do not know. So I was trying to bring them, all of them, in one work, trying to make sure all of my works are going to bring out the violences, the 21 violences which I did. That was the story of Ishani Sijonga, a female artist who is taking the bold step in fixing some of the social ills, not just in Zimbabwe, in the African continent, but all across the world. Those are the individuals that we had for you on the episode of iAfrica today. Be sure to join us again next time as we tell more stories of creatives in Africa who are pushing the African narrative in Zimbabwe, on the African continent and all across the world. I am your host Nicole Jamu and until next time, iAfrica searches for inspiration and innovation in all areas of popular culture, from fashion and design through to architecture, art, food and travel. The focus is on outstanding individuals doing extraordinary things on the African continent. iAfrica presents creatives in their home nations, visiting renowned designers, musicians, architects who are leaving their mark on the young continent. From well-known brands through to ambitious startups, Every week, iAfrica seeks out the continent's best design and lifestyle innovations. Join me, your host Nicole Jamu, as we take a round trip across Africa and get you inspired, motivated and future-oriented.